welcome to the MBS show. This is a special episode with me, your host, Daniel Anthony. Joining me on this lovely morning is Norman Sanzo. Hello. Morning, Dan. Hi, Norman. So, how's the chair feeling? What chair? Yep, you're back in the co-host chair for once. I threw that one out and I'm getting a sofa. Right, no wonder. I wonder yeah, sofas what is... are a good thing to chew out, by the way. Just yeah. <laughs> you know, when this sofa gets out of line, I'll just pimp slap it. That's what you gotta do. Yep, yep. Sometimes what you have to do. And our guest for today, you just heard him earlier, sofa specialist, AC Race Best. Hey, there you guys. How you doing? We're good, we're good. How about you? I am doing swell. I am full on good food. I'm ready to have some fun. Awesome. So, next, before we move on to the next part of the show, as usual, we need to ask every single guest this question. It can mean their life or their death. Actually, we're kidding. All right. So, the first question is, I'm sure you've been asked this before, who is your favorite pony? You know, nobody's asked me that before. Ever. We're proud to be life. the first. Okay, maybe I have been asked once or twice in the past. Rainbow Dash is my favorite pony forever and always will be Rainbow Dash. Any reason why? Um, she was the first, uh, the, the first, ep- this, I might even start trampling all over all your other questions right now, but <laughs> she was the first pony I was kind of introduced to that I was not expecting to see in the show. Um, the first episode I saw was uh, Fall Weather Friends, and immediately I'm introduced to this tomboyish pony who has rainbow hair but it's like cool and she's cool and i'm like this isn't supposed to be cool what's going on and yeah there's she just immediately grabbed my attention and she's pretty much the one who kind of helped grab me into the show so i've I've been a rainbow dash supporter even through the tough times in season two (laughs) always pull for rainbow dash awesome (laughs) okay so you answered which was your first episode so now which one is your favorite episode Oh, no! We this, allow multiple this, choices. This question isn't fair. That's why we allow uh, multiple choices. Well, I, I, will, I would have to say the season two finale. I know it technically was two episodes, but the season two finale, uh, I, there was just so much in that episode that was just amazing. It was perfectly set up. There was hype for it. Um... And it wasn't overhyped. It was it was it was just a great episode. Um, and I I personally had so much fun just sitting through that episode. You know, Chrysalis shows up. There's a point where you're thinking, how are the main six going to get out of this? Like, how? Um, and it, there was just I just loved it. Like it had that sense of I, I love it when I watch a movie, and I'm I'm asking myself or telling myself, there's no way no way that the main character can make it through this. Now let's see how they do it. And that's what that that episode, it was just, it was so much fun to watch. I, I loved it. Well, technically the main six didn't get out of it. It was his brother and sister-in-law. Right. Yeah, well it also helped that Chrysalis was like, you know what, I'm just going to turn my back on this group of people that could fix things for the next three minutes. <laughs> it's kind of a villain trope. Ha ha, I yeah. have captured you. Now I shall turn my back. Yeah, you know, sometimes I think they just, you know, lose their train of thought. They start, you know, thinking, what am I going to have for lunch? Uh, you know, do I have to go to the dry cleaner today? It just, it just happens. There's a lot for a villain. I don't think it's really appreciated. Yeah, it's true. I remember watching the reacts video you did on that. And <laughs> when Celestia came in, everyone was like, all right, show's over. <laughs> yeah, you know, Celestia was always kind of shown as like this god type character in the show. You think... Celestia is here, now they're going to show, okay, let's see how powerful Celestia is, and surprisingly we find out that she can be beaten. The first time we ever see her do anything, she's beaten. She could have just been out of practice because she's had Twilight do every freaking chore that she's had, but besides that, it's just, it, it, that was a surprising point in that episode where Celestia was taken down. It's not something you would expect, and I, I was... Uh, I appreciated the show basically kind of saying, hey, look, this is how powerful this villain is. It'll take down someone who, you know, these characters look up to. And I, I thought that was a, an interesting twist. 
You know, it does bring up a point where I am all powerful, but I am defeated. It takes the power of love to defeat the villain. It does. It also took the power of love to defeat the hero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a song somewhere there. There's a song love somewhere there. It's a dangerous there. thing. That is interesting. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Yes. So let's move on to the next one. And uh, the next one will actually be how did you get introduced to the show? Now, you mentioned Rainbow Dash, but did somebody push it your way or something? Someone pushed it in my face. That would be my girlfriend, Sarah, or as she's known online, Toodles. We've been together since 2008, and this show rolled around, you know, 2010. It came around, and she got into it in 2011. And I had some friends of mine who were also kind of getting into the show, uh, online friends. And she told me, watch one episode with me. And I knew better. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not watching My Little Pony because it is a show for little girls. I'm not, I, as a man, I have sworn to never watch a show of this stature, of this type. And I've seen the commercials when I was a kid. I, no, just not happening. The commercials so as a she, kid ruined it, didn't it? It did. You know what? The commercials as a kid is the biggest thing fighting against the show. I feel like, uh, I'm, and I'm not. I'm not trying to knock every previous generation because I know some people liked the previous generations. Uh, there were people who were fans of My Little Pony, but for this new generation, a lot of us were people who weren't into that. And for me, I knew what I saw as a kid and kind of how memories work from childhood years later, you kind of remember things exaggerated. And for me, it's like, I know how bad it was. It was, it, it was everything girly, 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 girly. And, and so, you know, she was kind of like just one episode, one episode. And she made the deal with me. I watched one episode. She'll never bring it up again, ever. And I'm like, fine. Okay. I, I can with. I can withstand 22 minutes and try to forget it. Pretend it never happened. And uh, I'm watching, you know, Fall Weather Friends, and I'm already kind of like, oh, okay, this is not what I expected. Okay, this is kind of good. All right, I'm actually kind of enjoying this. And, you know, so watching this episode, and and then it, it was about a week, and all I was doing was I, I was getting ready for to head down to school. Um and I was going to be moving into uh, a, you know, a new apartment complex and whatnot. The dorm with the couch? <laughs> the dorm with the couch, yes. And uh, I basically, all of a sudden, next thing I knew, I had watched the entire first season in three days. Like, How long ago was uh, this? this? I got into the show just before season two came out. It, I, season two um, was actually part of the reason why I think it it kind of happened so fast for me was that uh, I knew that the new season was coming up, and I think in my mind I said, if I'm going to get into this, I'm gonna, I have to get into this now, so I'm ready for the new season. And I don't I think that was more of a subconscious thing because in my mind I was still convinced I, I didn't like it that much. <laughs> well, yeah. By the time I got to like episode 15 of season one, I was like, oh, it's it's four in the morning, and I'm still. Watch it. Like, I looked in the mirror and said, ah, crap. <laughs> the realization stage. Yeah, that's... I'm an egghead. <laughs> See, but I didn't I didn't have a huge... Pro- like, you know, I kind of had the, like, uh... Like, I know there's, like, stages or whatever. I think I kind of jumped from the... Like, I'm not into the show. I'm kind of in the show. And then I just was like, oh, okay, I'm a brony. Like, <laughs> and I was just like, all right. And whatever. Here we go. So, what is your girlfriend's reaction to this? To me getting into the show? Yeah. It worked! Uh, she, she smirks about it. She's like, I told you. I told you so. And the problem is now she'll, she'll have a new, like, another show that she's watching. And she's like, hey, watch this one. And I'm like, no. I know what happened last time. Oh, God. Like, what else has she tried on you? Um, the, there actually shows that I am interested in seeing, well, yeah, see, here we go. Legend of Korra was one that, again, I let her talk me into watching it. It's not that I had anything against Legend of Korra or the Avatar series. It's just, I didn't feel like, I was like, ah, I don't know if that's something that would interest me. She gets me watching it and I'm like, ugh, 
that I was the one who was like waking her up. The season finale's tonight. Get up. <laughs> <laughs> and and then uh, another one's Gravity Falls which is a show that I, I'm pretty sure that I would get into. I just haven't really had the time to get into it. So, yeah, she's she's been talking me into watching some Gravity Falls as well. Gravity Falls, from what I can tell, is a good show. But for me, the issue is time. I, I don't have time to allocate to watch more series like yeah, Transformers too. Prime. I, I need to watch that because I heard it's a good, good one. And right now, the issue is time. It's not that we don't like it. It's just time. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, that's, I think, why, and it's, it's funny because it's become, like, almost an argument of the foundation of the fandom, but it's one of the things that is true is that a lot of people who watch the My Little Pony show don't necessarily wake up on Saturday mornings to watch it. They watch it on their own time, which generally means they watch it on YouTube, and it's funny because you think to yourself that, like, the show itself wouldn't appreciate that you know they they want you to watch in a certain spot like disney is pretty on top of their shows or whatnot like you know not ending up on youtube or at least it seems like they are they might not be i don't know but it, it's it's something that for my little pony i i feel like that's part of the appeal is that you can watch it whenever and because it's so out there there's stuff you can do with it as we've seen you know for example all the people who've made pmvs they're doing that because the the footage is easily accessible, they're able to recreate, and thus it gets out there more, it attracts some new people, and suddenly there's more bronies out there. So it almost, it works for the for the show itself. It, it gets more attention that way. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. I mean, currently, the only show that's managed to, like, yank me away from My Little Pony a bit is Little's Pet Shop, because... That marketing technique they used after the season finale was pretty good. Then, then I don't yeah. think it yanked you out of ponies. It kind of segued you into Pet Shop because... It, it segued me into there, but it's the only one that managed to divert some of my attention from ponies away because other shows that I watch, I'm like, meh. I don't think so this. because after watching ponies, you watch Pet Shop. That, that's, the, that's the trend now, man. Well, there is that nice thing too that it comes on right after, so... <laughs> yeah, but I don't watch live, so I, I watch on YouTube just like everyone else. And, and actually, speaking of YouTube, I watched my first episode, actually, I watched it legit because when I first got into Ponies, I wanted to watch an episode so badly after watching YouTube Poop. And I was scrambling up and up, where can I find this? Where can I find this? And I went to the My Little Pony website and they said, first episode free on iTunes. So <laughs> I went, just grabbed my mom's iPad, made an American iTunes account just for that, and then <laughs> grabbed the episode, and then the cliffhanger came. <laughs> and now this is for ponies or pet shop ponies okay yeah i wasn't sure if they had cliffhangers in the po- in the pet shop show too oh um, well, they did because the first episode is a two-parter as well see what they did there yep exactly it's a right trend. after the it's wedding as well marketing mm-hmm. all right so on to the last question of these four combination questions that you have to crack to enter the show so how do your family and your friends react to your love for this show about for little girls. Um, as far as friends go, I've managed to uh, circle myself with a really good, tight group of friends. I mean, I, I it's funny because some people they have like you know a group of friends. I kind of have like friends here, friends there, friends, here, friends everywhere, um, but not so much as a group. Um, so as far as the friends side, the best example I could use is Tommy, and he's actually been in a couple of my uh, videos. He's also he also was the one who helped me film uh, the, the uh, Vegas video one? I put together. What's that? The Vegas thing. Yes, he was in that. Uh, if you remember, oh, he right. actually had a mask on. Because uh, at oh, the time, that guy. He was, yes, yes, and uh, he also helped me film videos like Twenty Five Brony, you should know, um, and stuff. And it's funny because for him, he's always been a guy who isn't into cartoons really. But he understands the appeal. And for My Little Pony, he wasn't that surprised that I got into it because I was already getting back into shows like Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers and a lot of little Disney cartoons. And he had already kind of seen me progress into the cartoon world. So I don't think that this surprised him so much, more so than the fandom itself kind of surprised him. Like, oh, wow, that's surprising how big everything is. Um, 
He calls himself a frony, a fake frony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as as far as my family goes, I I'm trying to remember. I, I kind of think I just was like, hey, so I'm into a new cartoon. Surprisingly, it's My Little Pony, and I don't think they were that surprised either. Again, because of the cartoon stuff, they're like, you, "You're you surprised us so much up to this point that we're starting to lose the surprise." I think、um, their reaction is, "It's about time." Yeah, <laughs> I know, right?、Um, my、uh, it was、well, funny because like my I was talking to my mom、um, just the other, or actually today. About like some conventions, and she was actually looking into like what's better, driving or flying or this or that. So it's you know they I would say the the family's accepted it. They know they've already been warned. Hey, you're going to be plastered all over YouTube with this new Hawaii series that I'm putting out. And、uh, yeah, it's I think it took、uh, specifically my、uh, the middle child, my not youngest but younger sister. Uh, I think she was the one who was kind of like, "This is kind of weird," but other than that, it, it was pretty much like, "Eh, whatever." I, it was actually, to be honest, the biggest transgression for my folks, where they kind of realized, "Oh, this isn't just a thing that you're into. There are people also into this." Was when I made the "Like a Faust"、uh, <laughs> song and music video, because that got, I think. Oh gosh, what was it? Ten thousand views in a in a day or or a couple days. Whoa! And it's because you know I actually did not know about Questria Daily until that got posted on there, and I was like, "Whoa, what's what's going on? What's this?" And、uh, yeah, so you know, I I showed I showed her. I'm like, "Look how many views this video has."、And、she's like, "Oh wow, yeah." So I guess those aren't just a bunch of little kids, because、um, she. She actually said to me at one point, she's like, you know, I wouldn't post、uh, this about you liking the show on Facebook. I would just kind of leave it, you know, to your close friends. Well, after that video, she's she was posting that video on her Facebook, like, hey, look what he did.、So. <laughs> oh my! Go figure. That's awesome. This is just awesome. <laughs> okay, so now that you've answered that, so let's move on to just you know interrogate you about your life as a brony. So let's move on to our next section, and we are going into guest time today. We have the wonderful AC Race Best, the pioneer of a lot of Brony videos on YouTube, including Like a Faust and the Brony React series. So, AC Race Best, how about you introduce yourself to those people who may not know about you that well? I am a guy. Oh my goodness, he is a guy. Yes,、uh, I am a Southern California Brony who. Pretty much has enjoyed making laughter throughout his life.、Uh, I've always enjoyed making videos. I've always, it's it's always been a hobby of mine. And one day I made the right video and it took off. And we see how things turned out from there. I've met some amazing people in this fandom, and I just every day I'm I'm thankful for what I can deliver out there to the world of the Bronies. And we thank you so much for it because、yep. ah, it's so awesome. We need our entertainment. <laughs> yes, we all need some entertainment in our life. Oh, you、I、could mean, do that、uh, scene like Spartacus. Are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should put that in your video sometime. I should. I'll just put that in the comment section when someone's like, "Oh, I didn't like this video." Not <laughs> 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 entertained. <clears throat> Right. So, when you were introduced to the show by your girlfriend, how long did it take you to realize that there was a bigger Brony following? You know, rather than just you and your girlfriend watching it. Um, I I knew it. I actually was aware of it before I got into the show because I was、uh, because, like I said, my、um, some of my online friends and my girlfriend, who I actually met online, so a lot of us you know know each other. And we're talking online, and I would constantly see some videos、uh, from them, and I would see how much traffic these videos are getting. And so I kind of had an idea that there was a big following behind this, but again, it it wasn't something. I wasn't one of those people who didn't like the show. I was someone who didn't want to watch the show.、Um, I and so when I when I was seeing that my friends were in it, when I was seeing that there was this big following behind it, I was kind of like. Okay, that's interesting. 
this show. And there, the funny thing too is that there were scenes that I was seeing in these videos that were plastered all over the place. That I was like, what's going on? Like, why is there a, a deep voice coming out of this yellow pony with pink hair? And sh- you know, why does she sound like, you know, she's an evil and gen- like this doesn't make sense. <laughs> and then it all made sense once I watched the first season. <laughs> I-, I thought cartoons tend to like to do that. They'll take like the tiniest, cutest little character and give it the deepest voice they can find. Well, it was actually something that I didn't think. I thought that was something that. Um, like a fan had made. I thought someone was making fun of, like, like they were, they did that. I didn't realize that that happened in the show itself. So I was surprised. <laughs> so we've noticed your channel has lots and lots of awesome videos, and especially the one that you're very famous for is Bronies React. So can you tell us how Bronies React all began? Yeah, um, obviously we, uh, for those who have seen Bronies React, and for those who haven't, there is a series made by the Fine Brothers, called Teens React, which is a series that spawned off of their Kids React, and to take off some more mature, or take on some more more mature topics, and whatnot, one day they covered My Little Pony, specifically the fandom, but were rather ill-informed on the fandom itself, and I, it wasn't exactly what we would hope it would be, it was, it was pretty negative, it was, uh, it, it, first off, I don't think that the teens themselves were given the proper amount of information to make a true assessment of the fandom. But then they were asked, assess the fandom. And as teenagers, I think we've all been through a phase in our life where it's like, this is something I can't like, so I'm going to bash it. And it just, it felt like that was just oozing. There was just no love. I mean, from the majority. There were people who were like, there's that one guy, you know, dead. Yeah, that guy gave a bro hoof. Let's, Let's watch it. Uh, there were, you know, there were a couple in there who were neutral about it. They said, you know, like what you like. But it was specifically that the majority's response was just negative. And I'm like, you know, I think we could have fun with this. I think this is something that we can take and kind of spin it around. And I, it's something that I hadn't seen before, which it turns out that Smosh had actually done something but I was not aware of that because I had people commenting saying, oh, Smosh already did this. And I was like, oh, I actually had no idea. <laughs> um, and yeah, so what I did was I started going around to YouTube to some names that stuck out to me. Uh, you know, some guys that I had seen. And it's funny because some of the guys that first come to mind were guys who uh, were initially going to do it and then ran out of time or something came up, which was I bring the lulls and Mike the Microphone. Ah. Uh, but... There were other guys who I went to, uh, like d Notive. I had seen that he... I was pretty much looking for guys who would put videos of themselves. So I could kind of gauge, like, okay, this is this guy obviously has video equipment. He knows how to use it. And we can do this. I'll talk to them. Mm-hmm. And I probably sent out about 12 notifications. And I think I got a response from four or five. And... Then I was like, okay, well, I, I wanna, I wanna fill this in um, because I, you know, as I said, I, uh, Mike became busy. I'm like, oh, okay, who can I ask? Who can I ask? Give me. And it's funny because there's this one certain YouTube channel where I was like, hmm, I've seen this guy's videos. They've made me laugh, but I've never seen him on camera. But I'll contact him anyways. It was Solrek. Ah. And so I went to him. <laughs> And started talk, you know, talking with him about doing this video, and he's just absolutely gung ho about it. Oh, we have to do this! This is the best thing ever. We we pretty much talked every day up until the thing was made. Did he scream and at you when you asked him to do it the first time? Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, dude, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually was the one who's like, oh, hey, hey, I'll get you in contact with this guy. He has eight thousand subscribers on YouTube, and he makes this great music. And he's a fun guy. Oh, cool. Who is it? The Living Tombstone. Oh, okay, right. Who, at the time of that video, which was about a year ago, had, if I recall correctly, 8,000 subscribers. You look at him now, the guy has a, over 100,000. You want to talk about a jump in subscribers, look at Tombstone. <laughs> Indeed. Um, and yeah, and it's just, you know, they, they were both gung-ho about it. Uh, you know, I talked with Dusty. I talked with Brony Mike, Denotive. Solrak and Tombstone, 
And it was one of those things where it just kind of all came together. I, I, all I did was I said, you know, here's how I'm looking for you to film it, and here's the questions. Go. And we got what you saw. And it was great because it was, it was all kind of each person had their own input. It wasn't something that was like, hey, say this. It was more of, you know, what do you have to say about this? Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I think, of course, uh, a lot of bronies would have been sufficiently ticked off by that video. So, I mean, this response would have been the cry of everyone. I think I think that's also what kind of pushed me to do it was because I saw a lot of people were kind of upset about the video. And I'm like, well, yeah, maybe we can make this kind of just something that we can just laugh at. Not not necessarily say like, oh, you're stupid, but, you know, just kind of make, make a joke of everything. Oh. Awesome. So I was wondering, um, when you sent out those requests to the people, and once those people replied, and you asked, sorry, um, you basically show them a link, watch this, and they give you a response. So they have to watch the whole thing from start to finish, and they record it from start to finish. Um, actually, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, actually, for the first one, that's what we did. Mm. Um, the because it's it's only I think it's about seven minutes long. I said here, you know, here's here's the stuff, react to it, and then I also sent them the questions. So it was a grouping. I said react to this, react to the question. So um, I got quite like like do you know to for example sent me, uh, you know his his reel, and then he has his answers and. Uh, and everyone, it, it all kind of came together really nicely. Now, Solrak was the one that was interesting because he wasn't on camera. He was sending me audio clips, and we actually had someone who was able to draw up some of his responses. And then later down the road, I was like, oh, you know, it would be cool if we could do this, but I don't think the artist was available. And so my girlfriend, who's also an artist, adjusted some of the clips so we can make it look like he's shouting or or make it look like he's doing this or that, or the scene where uh, he's just kind of staring. You know, we were able to adjust that with the eyes and everything. So she was also a big help when it came to all of that. Awesome. So in later episodes, uh, you just showed him clips and then asked him to respond to that? Uh, for the later for the later Bronies reacts? Yes. Uh, for the later Bronies reacts, um, specifically, whenever we react to an episode... What I will do is because episodes, well, the ones that we react to, uh, being the bigger ones, they're, you know, 40 plus minutes long. Yeah, I was wondering so, about that. <laughs> yeah, so I tell them, I say, you could do it one of two ways. I give them a sheet of uh, basically big events that happened in the episode. Uh, big ones that people are, people in the fandom are already reacting to, ones that, you know, I, I, like I reacted to, um, and I'll say, you know, these are scenes, like the key scenes, but if you want to do the whole thing, which some people do, do that. Uh, and I get, I get a lot, trust me, a lot of footage when it comes to all this. And, um, it, yeah. So for those, that's kind of how I do it. And I'll, I, I grouped questions with the last one and, you know, trying some new things here and there. Okay, okay. I was wondering because the one I recently watched was your season three premiere and that was like 20, 22 minutes long, I think. And it was like almost an episode. Yeah, yeah. I it mean, was almost full uh, commentary in a sense. No, it's, actually, it's actually a 22 minute long video, <laughs> which which is, uh, the, let's see, yeah, it's probably just a little bit longer than what uh, one episode would be. But because it was for an hour time slot, it was basically cut in in half, so it was almost like an episode itself. Indeed, and it was really entertaining. <laughs> yeah, I watched it twice over, because after I finished it, it was, one day I was just having a bad day, and I pulled it up, and it just totally wiped the frown off my face. I couldn't stop laughing for like 10 <laughs> minutes after the video ended. Awesome. And yeah, that was, it's funny, because that, that was a video that took me, it was one that I was aiming to get out, and I forget, but there, I think there were some hang-ups, and I was like, oh, you know, got to get it out, got to get it out. Um, but it's it's funny because I really have been trying to cut down the time. And just each time we make these, 
the guys and girls send me stuff that is just better, funnier, and it's like, I can't cut this, I can't cut this. So as long as there's a flow, there's no downtime in it, that's my goal with the Bronies Reacts, is that no matter how long they are, they're entertaining from start to finish. It just keeps getting longer and longer and longer. But it gets better! Just before this, I believe it was the Cupcakes one. Cupcakes. Cupcake was the cupcakes, the 12 cupcakes minutes. Yeah, if I remember, it's 12 minutes. I got that one down to 12 minutes. <laughs> we need Actually, it longer. I really want to ask, what, what's with all the dresses and masks and stuff? Well, the reason that we did that was because it was filmed, it, were, it was released on Halloween. Ah, okay. Because I was so going on like, why are they in the uh, masks yeah. and why is Batman yeah. on this? It's, it's Halloween. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it's, it's the Halloween Bronies React, and I wanted. Basically, I, from the time that we released the first Bronies React, and it took off, that's when I decided, okay, we're going to make this a series, we're going to do this more, we're going to make a bunch of these. And uh, a lot of people were requesting cupcakes, react to cupcakes, this and that. And I was like, you know what, we're going to do that, but it's going to be for Halloween. Like, that's, I already had it set in my mind that I was going to release that on Halloween day. Um, and that's what we did. And that was that was one of the more difficult ones because I knew I had a date. Like, most of these I don't have a date for release. That one, I knew I had a date. I had to get it done. Well, and, it was a deadline kind of thing, right? Oh, yeah. And it was it, it was definitely a push to get that one done. But I will be up to, like, I, I'll stay up. And I'll also look over and be like, oh, it's 9 in the morning. This is a problem. <laughs> Oh, wow. Hey, Reese, you want to hear some inside story that I got from Griffin with his video? Yes. Um, before he posted that video, I met him in Singapore for a meetup because he went there and traveled. So anyway, um, he told me that he was going to be in a Bronies React video and he said his plan was to build a Master Chief armor, but supply didn't came, everything went wrong, and he ended up using the ninja outfit. Yep, uh, he... Uh... That was one of those things that it was so close for for that to be successful. Uh, he had he had the voice ready to go. He he had the he thought he was gonna have the costume ready to go, and because of the way timing and everything worked with it, like I said, with the deadline, um, it was just one of those things where it, did, it didn't work out. Yeah, yeah, and so he uh, he still did a fantastic job, you know. Yeah. Basically, coming up with something on the spot. Opted um, out to be ninja. <laughs> yeah, and I, I thought that that was a that was a pretty funny take of the. You know, I hate it. <laughs> and he, uh, yeah, I mean that guy's just a crack up as it is. And I, I was, I was glad that he was able to pull something off, but I was also bummed for him that he wasn't able to do what he had planned. Yeah, I, I could, I could just imagine him being Master Chief and talking in Master Chief's voice and saying. I don't like this. What do you think, Cortana? <laughs> oh, boy. So, um, you will choose certain videos like Cupcakes, and you also choose episodes for Bronies React. So what is your criteria for choosing these things? I mean, Cupcakes, you said that your fans asked you for it, but what about the episodes? How do you choose which episodes you want to put in for Bronies React? The, actually, it's funny because as far as episodes go, episodes were never on my mind to do Reacts to in the first place. But the reason that we did the season two finale was because there was such a demand for it. And someone commented on one of the Bernie's reacts saying, you should come or you should do a Bernie's react to the season two finale. I loved it. I, I had a great time watching it, but it didn't really cross my mind. Well, that comment, I wake up the next morning and had like I don't, 60 thumbs up or whatever. And I was like, oh, my gosh. OK, we're doing it. And I, I rounded everyone up. I said, okay, this is what we're doing. This is new. <laughs> we'll figure out a way to make it work. And, uh, yeah, that, that turned out to be one of the most popular Bronies reacts there is. So I pretty much decided that, you know, we'll, we'll stick to the big episodes, ones that are very much requested. I know a lot of people were actually requesting us to do the Discord episode this season, but it was timing was an issue there. Um, and plus, I knew that we already had the finale that was planned on being reacted to. So I didn't, instead of kind of 
forcing everything in a small time and, and not being able to put the quality into it that you know I that I require of myself for these reacts. I was like, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold off. Everyone will survive. We know the finale's coming. So there's gonna be a reacts to the coronation. I didn't say that, did I? Nope, you didn't. I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's just say, don't be surprised. Surprised okay. that Twilight is an unicorn? <laughs> Oh boy. He's already reacted to that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I was wondering, because um, looking through your Bronies Reacts video, you often use the same person, like Jax Blade, Tombstone, and Denotive, and that one guy I kind of forget that always flipped the, the table. Flip the table, yeah. Yeah. You, Orchestral you, design. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that dude. So you keep using the same people. Um, I, I can understand... It's a uh, convenience sake, but in general, what's your criteria for picking the people that you choose for your videos? Well, the first one was kind of a, uh, literally actually was me finding who I could get. And I was surprised at the people I was getting. Like when Dusty said, yeah, I'll do it. I was like, oh my gosh, the manliest brony in the world is going to be on this video. Oh my gosh. And... You know, there was this, that kind of uh, response for me. I was because I actually went to a couple friends. I said, "I need one more person. Uh, can you fill in for this?" Because I wanted a minimum of six people on the video. And uh, it, it's funny how it kind of turned out because it turned out being people who were well known. You know, they each kind of had their own little following. Um, and I was like, "Oh well, this this actually turned out pretty." damn good how it you know who we ended up with as far as the uh criteria later on though what i've always wanted to do with the bronies reacts and you may have noticed at this point what i'm kind of doing is there's some who are uh like kind of the usuals guys that you see a lot like tombstone uh like soul rack like saber spark um and then you have people who I also wanted it to be like half kind of a regular cast and then half of, you know, special guests thrown in. Um, so, so it's always kind of alternating and, and whatnot. And what, what I, what I aim for is for it to be people who, you know, the, the fandom will recognize, so to speak. Um, so when I, you know, when I, especially like, or, or actually, I'm sorry. It's for people who they'll recognize or people who really, really pertain to the topic on hand. And Paul Dummerat in the Derpy one covered both of those bases. She had her following. Um, and at the same time, she also did a lot of fan voice work for Derpy. And I was like, this is okay. perfect. And she, you know, she was all for it. I was like, great. And, you know, we, we had her on and. So, so I kind of, I kind of think about, okay, this is our topic. Who can we use? And like I said, it's, it's kind of a, uh, a thing where I, I almost, I almost look at it kind of like a Saturday Night Live. So you have people who, you have your regular cast, and then you have, you know, all the people. It's like, oh, there's that guy, and oh, okay, and you know, you're seeing them react, you're seeing their response to it. Uh, you know, okay, so that's their take on this. And that's kind of what I've always envisioned for the Bronies React, and so far, so good. <laughs> Definitely, it's been a really, really great series to follow. Awesome. Well, thank you. It's going like, you know, we need, like, the voice of Bronies to be out there, rather than just on the comments page on, you know, MLP board or Equestria Daily's comment box. This is really, like, the more verbal side of it. Well, I was... The thing that got me... Uh, was when I found out that show, the show staff, some of the show staff actually watch them too. And I was like, oh, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, God. I, I could just imagine the stress of, oh, my God, X person watched my video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually was uh, uh, very lucky. Um, that's kind of the way I ended up meeting Sibsy. Ooh. Who I've now been able to, you know, like she's a friend of mine. I and it's one of those things where it's like it's amazing for me to look back at where I started and then to see where things are now. 
and the fact that I'm able to say Sibzy and I are buds. You know, she. The what was funny was the season two finale. I don't know if you recall, but there was that portion where Sibzy's uh, pony, her OC, was in the show. Yeah, well, yes. I, yeah, and I like you know we're all kind of like oh it's Sibzy oh, and she just got a kick out of that. <laughs> and one of my friends was like, you know, uh, silent. He was like, hey, uh, look what this person said. And I didn't, I didn't make the connection at first. I was like, oh, cool. She, she thought that was funny. Wait a minute, who is this? And it turned it out. Oh, that's Simpsy. And then I had my moment of, oh my god, Simpsy. <laughs> that one moment when you realize somebody from the show commented on your video. Yeah, it's 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 wild. It's a it's just a crazy experience, and it's it's one that I would not give up. I totally had that as well when I I posted out a video of me doing a cover of the Smile song, and Daniel Ingram commented on it, and I didn't know it was him. Because it wasn't his official, you know, Danny I music account. Uh, <laughs> or that Connie for One account. And I was like, oh, well, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have quite a few musicians in the fandom. And it's always cool to see when uh, when their works get recognized uh, by the show staff. That's always a really cool thing to see. Yeah, totally, you totally just flip at it. <laughs> so we all know how it feels. No way. Like, we did a, we did a birthday shout-out for Sipsy as well on our show. And uh, she read it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that night. Nice. Wow, very nice. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's it's for me. It's it's so cool to see how into the fandom a lot of the show staff are. I mean, Equestria LA. I, I had the opportunity and the privilege to you know get to meet people like M. A. Larson, who writes for the show, Megan McCarthy, who writes for the show, and to see the <laughs> interest they had. I mean, the genuine interest that they have in this fandom, in this community, it's it's really cool. It's one of those moments where you're just like, this is a really cool group of people, and they care. And that's that's why this show is as successful as it is. Very true. Awesome, because of the interaction between the show crew and the fandom. You don't see that much in shows these days, or previously. No, and it's, it's partially, I, I think it's because... There's kind of a, I, I would say it's it's difficult for a lot of uh, staff on different shows because they there's so many things that are tied to contractually that it's it's difficult for them to be able to mingle. You know, they're almost, you know, th- there's all, only so much they can do, but at the same time, it's it's when they go out of their way to do it that's what makes the difference. True. True. So, Dan, any more yes. questions? Because oh, definitely, I'm trying to definitely. Think. Because um, I watched the videos that you had when you did your little tour in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, that was that was totally fun. So, how did you get an idea to just go out and ask random people about ponies? I've done it before. I, uh, <laughs> you know, well, I, I actually, I, I didn't do the pony part of it. But I've gone to Fremont Street. I've, I've videotaped before. There's drunk people everywhere. It's fun. And I thought to myself, this just kind of popped in my head. I'm like, why don't I go interview a bunch of drunk people? But I'll ask them questions subtly about My Little Pony. I'll ask them who's their favorite pony. Or, yeah, I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I, I didn't have a clue, but I'm like, let's do it. There's a camera on. It's rolling. So the risk versus reward is there. I, I just wanted to see how this is going to turn out. <laughs> I remember that, and, that dude who was what? He was... Was it like this redneck guy who said, oh, I love horse racing? Oh, my God. Well, what happened was I went out to, usually when I go out to Vegas, it's for something that is NASCAR related. Um, I am heavily into stock car racing. And it's something, you know, I, I work at a racetrack during the weekend. I, I just, I'm so tied in with everything. And, you know, Daytona's coming up. I'm, I'm all hyped about that. My friends who don't even follow NASCAR know Daytona's coming up because I don't shut up about it. And uh, so we went down there, and that was the first guy I'd interviewed that night. We were in the pit area for the racetrack. And I'm like, this guy's rambling about the strangest things. I'm going to ask him, who's your favorite pony? And he just gave me that look, and he's like, a pony? Is that a gay question? And I was just like, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I mean, it was just, it was it was entertaining. And, you know, the, then I snuck in like, oh, yeah, yeah. Wonderbolt, and he's like, like, 
Yeah, he'd be a Wonderbolt. Okay. So, so then we went down to Fremont Street where I uh, filmed the first two. And uh, the first one specifically was a huge success because of that one guy that we ran into who was just all about talking to Oscar Goodman, who was oh, yeah. the ex-mayor of Vegas. Uh, we found out later, and he's just going on, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is golden. And when he chose Fluttershy as his favorite pony, I was like, my life is complete. I just, I couldn't believe that he, like, I figured, okay, maybe he'll go with it, and he was like, Fluttershy. Fluttershy is a very aggressive guy. He <laughs> thinks the right things. Fluttershy never stutters. Stutters is a great guy. Like, he just <laughs> goes on, and I was like, oh my god. First off, he's describing the exact opposite of Fluttershy. Perfect. Uh, it was just, it was hilarious. And, and so there was that, and then the second one, it was, you know, just as crazy, just as wacky. But the problem with the second one was that we got kicked off of Fremont Street. Oh. Yeah. We, uh, we were escorted off by security. And they said because we didn't have a permit to be filming there. And we were using the camera. Like I said, I work at racetracks. We do videography at these racetracks. And we have a nice $2,000 camera. And I'm, I'm assuming that they're making the assumption, a lot of assuming going on in the sentence, but uh, that, that they think we're some big production, like MTV or something. And they're like, where's your permit? Oh, well, you don't have one. Everyone's standing around here with video cameras. Why are we the issue? We don't have a permit. So you have to leave. This private property, get out. And we're like, okay. So we actually went back down. I filmed a third one, which I haven't released yet. Uh, and I'm still kind of holding on to it. And I imagine I will release this at some point. But what happened with it is that the same guy who kicked us off Fremont Street ran into us again. And he's like, Aww. wait, were you guys here like three weeks ago? And we're like, shoot. <laughs> yeah. And he told us, he's like, if I catch you back here again i you guys are gonna get a uh i'm gonna write you up for trespassing it's like oh Oh, okay because what we're you know there's drunk people everywhere there's people throwing up everywhere there's people smashing in windows we're the problem (laughs) all right i mean but you know it's one of those things where it's you know it, it is technically private property they have people running those streets we have to abide by their rules um, so I don't, I don't, if we do, we are going to be going back to Vegas in March. And when we go back, I don't think we're going to go to Fremont street with the big camera, but we might go down with a little camera. If they kick us off, then, then I'm going to just be like, really? You just use like, the one that you use in your car. That, that little camera, That's right? the thing. That's the thing is I'm, I'm saying like, cause they might recognize us cause we're walking around with a mic and whatnot. But if they kick oh, us yeah. off at that point, I'm just going to be like, are you kidding? Like, all right. Uh, at the same time, I've looked into getting permits, and all of the permits they have are for commercial filming, which we're not doing. So I think they, they have the misunderstanding, and they're just not taking our word for it. But I'm not one to argue with the law. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. This just sucks, man. This just sucks. Well, it's just, it's circumstance, you know. It's, it's not like... It's not like my channel revolves around that. It's not like I rely on that. Um, but I still think it's it's silly because uh, what we're not doing, we're not really uh, infringing on anyone's privacy down there. But it is technically private property, so they do have say on what we do. We could go on the strip and film whatever. But what's nice about Fremont Street is there's such a collection of bars and alcohol right there, and everyone's in this tight spot that it's hard to not run into a drug person who's ready to talk. <laughs> oh, boy. About the whole Vegas thing, mm-hmm. have you ever, you know, been scared of, I mean, I don't know about there, but here, if you try that, I, I probably risk getting a punch in the face or something like that, you know? Have you ever, you know, been faced with a more negative or more, uh, rather, other than just getting, you know, blocked or prevented from recording, have you ever been faced with any negative or violent response to your questions? Um, no, and if I did, it would probably end up in the video. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not one to, like, be like, oh, that didn't go right, or that's not the way we wanted it to look. When I go to Fremont Street, I, I partially anticipate i keep a close i i do keep a very close eye on what i'm filming who i'm around um 
you know, I, I try to make it so it's an environment that isn't necessarily dangerous. But that's what's nice about Fremont Street is that there are so many security walking around that if something did happen, I first off, it would be on film, which I think would be the first debtor to anyone to do anything. But then on top of that, it you know, it, I just feel like it is actually a safer location than it may look. Um, you know, there's a lot of security around there, a lot of police. Um, just unfortunately, for some reason, they've been coming after us, of all people. Is it just that one officer? It's It's been one, but I think what happened was the one time, and I was actually unaware of this, but when they came up to us, and I mentioned Tommy, he was actually the one who helps me film the last two. Um, he, uh, I guess they were coming up to him and saying, you have to leave now. But the guy was rapping, and he was not stopping, and he was full throttling, and Tommy just was like, I, I have to see where this guy goes. And I think that's where we became kind of a, a stick in their memory, whereas, yeah, that we kind of didn't necessarily, like, because I didn't, I wasn't actually aware that we were being asked to leave. Until they said, final warning, you got to get out of here now. And I was like, oh, I didn't know we had any previous warnings. And it turned out that we did. <laughs> so uh, any other places you're thinking about other than Las Vegas? You know, anywhere in California? As far as that kind of stuff? Yeah. Um, actually, yes. Uh, there is a certain part of California. I shouldn't say part because there's probably a lot of parts, but... There's a location near me known as Hollywood, California, and I have done a little bit of filming there, but all that footage is on a hard drive that doesn't work right now. Oh, God, oh no. dear. Yeah, and it's, again, it's it's not, luckily the, the footage, the last time I went to Hollywood and filmed was with Soul Rack, and we filmed the Gangnam Style video. Uh, oh, that was in that? Hollywood. Yes, that was in Hollywood. We were dancing around Hollywood in the middle of the day. <laughs> Right down, you know, next to the Chinese theater and everything. And uh, it's, yeah, so that, all that was, uh, that was pretty, that was a fun day. That right there was a good day. I, I seen the video and it looks awesome. Yeah, with <laughs> Dusty starting yeah. it, it's like, ooh. See, and yeah, and that's another thing. Like, just like the Bronies reacts, they could be, they could be anything without the people who are in them. And... You know, I love doing collaborations like that kind of thing. And the Gangnam style, once again, just the footage that people gave me was perfect. They, It was great stuff. It was funny. And, it, you know, they gave me great pickings when it comes to video. Saber Sparked elevator scene is priceless. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? He had two. The one with him on top. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Paleo shaking his finger and everything. That's, yeah, that was some funny stuff. Yeah, did you guys Sorry. talk to Safer Spark? Not yet. We're trying to. I actually uh, have, and I think I got on his bad side. Did you? Because I asked him for help on a, a project that I was doing. Because he's like the god of documentaries, as far as I was concerned. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I will say, I will say that I know he's been incredibly busy. Um, yeah, he is. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't necessarily take it as being mad at you as much as him just being really really busy because i know i've had i've had a case where like you guys know uh we've been trying to set up this interview for a while now <laughs> and it's just we found an opening we jumped on it yeah but i know that there right now he and bailey are buckling down on the documentary and i'm so looking forward to it i i really think this is going to be a, just fantastic i'm just excited to see what they do with it yeah, he's putting a real lot of work into it. I I really really want to see it happen. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm it praying is. that there's no like touch wood C and D or something going to come his way or <laughs> anything like that. I don't think there will be uh, because well I don't know. I mean I, I say there won't be, but I because I haven't actually I've I've helped a little bit with it, but uh, from what I've seen, there's nothing really beyond it being a documentary, non-profit documentary. That I I don't know I don't know I I'm no legal guy I could say whether or not I know I just talk and don't stop talking really. <laughs> but that's what we do too that's why we have a po- that's why we have a podcast <laughs> we, <laughs> we love look talking on tape so <laughs> we put our voices up instead I'm not sure works. about that not sure about that yeah. oh that's for me okay not you right <laughs> I I don't know man <laughs> me on video I've done it before. Uh, it's nothing you new. Good, I don't. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, enough about us. Let's continue on to race. 
we were wondering how many applications do you receive in a day to say that says, "Hey, put me in, put me in, put me in." I get your inbox explode. So many, like I, I really couldn't put numbers to it. Like I get. I get them on YouTube. I get them on Twitter. I get them on Tumblr. I get them on Facebook. I get them everywhere. Um, and that's that's part. You know, people ask me like, "Well, why can't why can't I be in the whole?" You know, part of part of what makes the reacts is kind of the selective process of who's in it. People are excited to see who's in it, um, and it, it's just it's yeah. I mean, I get so many requests. I would have probably. 300 people sign up for the next react in a you know ready to send footage in and i'm just like oh my god there's so much stuff uh, and, and yeah I, I i feel bad that i have to you know turn people down or away but um it's just it's part of the nature of this kind of project well you're sitting on a potential american idol ish thing right now you know you can just audition people for it <laughs> that is true, but then that would be more work too. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Well, of course, you could call in some people to help out with that. Like the current board of people who are on Brony's React. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like you know, I have this much time in the day to put towards making videos, which sometimes is none. And yeah, I try to do with it what I can. Oh, I yeah. can understand. I can understand because twenty-four hours is so short, especially if you're studying. <laughs> Yeah, you know, studying, making engineering projects, and then working on the weekends, it, it drains. So what is the criteria for someone getting selected? Into the Reacts? Yes. Pretty much, I would say, for it, there's... The main thing is I, I'd like to have people... Uh, I use the Saturday Night Live analogy. It's people that the fandom will recognize. Um that they, you know, they already have a bit of a following, and it it kind of promotes who they are as a person versus, like, you know, musicians. You you see their work, you hear their music, but you kind of sometimes wonder, what is this person like? What do they have to say on this topic? Um, and and that's the that's the kind of goal I've always had with this is, uh, like, once this became a series, was let's let's bring people together who. You know, people might be interested, like, what do you think on this case? Because, like, nowadays, I'll get asked, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And it kind of goes to answer people's questions for, you know, six to eight people who say, here's here's my thought process on this. And, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely kind of a quality barrier where, you know, I'm working with people who – have done collaborations before they you know they have the time thing that's that's also part of like the regulars i was asked about earlier um a lot you know they're they're people who a are like oh he has to be on the next one or she has to be on the next one or it's that you know there's also the the working in the background where it's like this person was incredibly easy to work with great on time and, and all that is kind of factored into it Hmm. Okay, so, so if... now you know what goes into every episode of Bruni's React. Oh yeah, now now stretch that a month, a month long. <laughs> yeah. So I, this is what AC does to make you smile. Be happy. This is what I do for you. <laughs> I, I was wondering, how long does it take you to finish one video from start to finish? About a month. Uh, About for a month. the Bruni's Reacts. And that's because I like to give the people who are on it enough time to get their footage into me. I don't want it to be something that they have to rush necessarily. Um, like for – yeah, like pretty much from the time that we start come up with the idea. Um, like, okay, this is the video. Like when we did College Humor, we said, all right, this video is out. It's current and it's something a lot of people are talking about. So we're going to take this, and then what I'll do is I'll go and make a format for it. I'll, I'll kind of go through and either pick out specific scenes, or if it's something like the College Humor video, it kind of has its own footing. It's it's something that will have kind of a short segment. And then the questions, which will usually be about 10 to 12 questions that I'll write out. And then I'll pick, choose, eliminate, revise, 
And when I take all this stuff, I smush it together, I send it out. So that, that usually takes a couple of days. I send it out, and I usually give people about two weeks. And then from getting everyone's footage, it usually takes me about a week just to break it all up, compile it, and put it together before I even start making the selection process of whose answers I'm keeping, whose I'm, who's I'm ditching, and then comes the whole quality side of it where I'm slowly, carefully putting it all together, making sure the timing's good. Oh, it's about a month long. And I need to ask, for particularly the Bronies React video, how many times in that month did you crave Cheetos? <laughs> Cheetos, man. I'm actually one of the few people who didn't have Cheeto props with me in that video. But I will say that Cheetos are good. Uh, how many times did you like get a craving for it? Because you're going to see Black Griffin eating Cheetos right there. <sighs> Black Griffin? Well, actually, you know, it worked because Black Griffin's eating Cheetos, but then I look at a scene of Saber's work with the Cheetos stuffed up his nose. <laughs> and, and surprisingly, the appetite craving goes away. I don't know what. It's just magic. Saber's, Saber's work can help us all lose weight just by that one scene. <laughs> oh, God, no, I just suddenly popped into my head. <laughs> oh, my. He pulled, it, he pulled it out and I'm like, not gonna eat that. Yeah. You. Yeah, a lot of people were worried. So, we asked you how long does it take to finish a video, so what do you use to edit the videos? I use Vegas uh, Pro. Oh, Sony Vegas then. Yes. Not a coincidence, huh? <laughs> so, um, did you learn it by yourself or did you learn it in college or school? Uh, all of my editing is self taught. Um, just, you know, messing around with a video editor one day. Uh, actually, what I did was one one day I went and it was like, you know what I want to do? I want to make a movie with a bunch of my high school buddies. And I, I knew that if it was going to happen, it had to happen the summer before senior year because summer after senior year, people were going to go off to college. They were going to be gone. And I was like, let's do this. And I actually wrote up an entire script for a whole movie and – we went and filmed this movie, and I edited it together. It was a grueling process, and I was like, I liked that. I enjoyed that. And I, I've just been – that. God, I can't even remember the name of the program I was using. But my mom had bought it for – you know, she, her, in her mind, she's like, oh, now you can edit our, our vacation videos or our, our family videos from years ago. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm going to make a movie. <laughs> and – yeah, I've just been, you know, constantly learning new things with the program. Self, like I said, this is all self-taught. Um, I, I would like to learn more about uh, Adobe After Effects. Um, that's that's a program I've been trying to mess around with a little bit. So I, I'm trying to expand the horizons uh, and, and see what what new things I can come up with. I'm sure one of the few hundred people on, uh, you know, Ponies the Anthology Two will be willing to help. Yeah, that's true. There are quite a few, um, and and yeah, it's funny because like when I watch uh, videos like the anthology, uh, the anthology was actually one of the uh, motivators I had when I started making pony videos. The first few pony videos I put up were these short, random little videos, and but then it kind of started to branch to my own thing, and uh, you know, like we see today. <laughs> It's pretty much AC Race Best does whatever the hell he wants at this point. Indeed, I have to say that there's a evolution curve throughout your video career because starting with um, Chip and Dale with the Chipception, um, yes, that was two years ago, and you move on to Rolf Pony, um, Roll on Flow Pony, yeah, yeah. Ruffle Pony, Ruffle Pony. <laughs> Ruffle Pony. <laughs> Uh, you still, and then, like, moving on to your latest one, Hawaii 1, The Journey Begins. Um, that doesn't look pony. No, no, it, it isn't pony. Um, and that's, you know, the, it's it's funny because I was thinking to myself, the majority of my fans, or my fans, my followers, my subscribers, the people who watch my videos, they're here because of, you know, the yeah. pony side of my stuff. And... When I was making the Hawaii stuff, while there's references here and there to the show, because, you know, it's part of who I am, uh, just like, you know, 
there's probably going to be a ton of racing references that pop out in it too. There's probably going to be some Chip and Dale Rescue Ranger reference. I mean, you know, it's all kind of the stuff that comes out. Uh, but knowing my audience, I was like, okay, I need to make this appeal to them too. And this is actually not the first time I've done a vacation video of this type. Uh, definitely as far as quality uh, and, you know, time with it, I'm spending more time with it because I know I have the audience uh, to watch. But I'm definitely putting these videos together to make them entertaining for everybody. Um, and, yeah, I, I just know that, you know, I have to put in that extra extra few minutes into it just to make it that much better. So my fans who are here for the pony also enjoy this you know it has the quality it'll have the shots it'll have the music with it i gotta make it entertaining for them so you're while, while you're doing this for yourself you're also doing this for your subscribers yeah uh pretty much when i make a video i aim to make it enjoyable for me and i it's worked so far i, I know that if i like how it came out and how, how it kind of works it's just like with artists it's just like with musicians with us video makers, uh, we, we will critique ourselves. We'll say, oh, I, I shouldn't have done this or I should do that. And sometimes it's just kind of sitting on it for a day that you say, okay. Like, like for me, I like to make a video and then you know I'll go to sleep. And then when I wake up in the morning, I'll watch it again and see if everything was how I kind of thought it was. Because sometimes time will make you want to rush through something. And it's you convince yourself it's good enough, and I actually did that once with one of the reacts. I did it with the uh, uh, college humor react, and what happened was there were so many things that I was not happy with, and I I actually didn't know because this was a video that I stayed up till nine a.m. editing, and I was I was just like I, okay it's done I sleep for two hours, and then I was off on a vacation. Oh. <laughs> Wow. And, and so, so what I did was I slept for those two hours. Um, I hit upload. My internet at home just sucks. Uh, with my, I don't know what it is with my parents' internet, but it's just horrible. And it said it would take about eight hours to upload. And I'm like, okay, what? whatever. Yeah, so I took my laptop with me. And on the drive up to where we were going to vacation, I'm watching this video. And I'm like, oh, there are just editing errors left and right in this. And I called up my friend and had him sign into my account to kill the upload. Wow. Because, you know, it, it was one of those things where if I kill the upload, it's going to be delayed another week. But for me, I felt like what is expected of these videos, I don't want to deliver one that isn't of quality. Yeah, I mean, better wow. delay than give them crap because if you give them crap... That's just the expectations will be lowered next time. Yeah, and it's 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 one of those things where I I don't want that I, I want these videos to reflect the amount of time I put into them. And like I said, I put the time into it. The problem was I was half awake when I was doing it, and so I didn't realize that I was. You know, there, there's little things for me that it's like I just can't stand. Um, you know, one of them being if if a clip is next to another clip, but it's not up against that clip, there's just like a split second of black and that will bug the oh. hell out of me. And it's like that kind of stuff. It's like, no, that cannot happen. So, yeah, that's the kind of stuff that I'm, I'm always very, very, very careful to look for. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to hear that you're putting a lot of dedication into your work because I've seen some videos. Uh, let's just not talk about other people. Let's just talk about me. Like, I did videos for my school project and some of them were half-assed and uh, uh, let's just say that I wish I could do better. I yeah, have the same things. I'm studying broadcast, so I've got to do a lot of video work in my class and there are times when you don't know how to use a certain camera and then everything goes out of hoof, so to speak. <laughs> Everything yeah, was, and we that's... shot one footage on out of focus. It was completely blurred. We shot all the footage in one day, and then I went back home and I was like, "Ah, oh, right." Well, that's that's one thing I'm excited about is that I had been using a camera that was I I, I thought when I got it way back when that it was HD, but I think that HD was just starting to come around. 
Um, and it was a high quality camera. It's cute. It's cute. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and I, that was just one of those things where I was like, oh, okay, I, okay, okay. And so, you know, I didn't have the HD side of it, and then I, I finally bought this new video camera, and, and it's HD, there's, uh, so I'm going to be carrying that one around when I go to conventions and do, you know, video blogs, and I just, I like having that crisp look. It's like, oh, that's nice. So, I um, uh, hope you don't mind me asking, but what kind of camera do you have now? I have... Uh, I don't mind you asking, but I'm going to have to look at it. And I don't actually know where it is right now. It's a, it's a newer Sony camera. Da, 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 is it the da, shoulder da. mounted thingy or the... No, it's it's actually corner. just a... It's, it's a camcorder, but it's an HD camcorder, which was the thing I needed. It was like, I need I need an HD camcorder with a mic jack. Like, those were my, my two things because oh, I knew yes. if I was going to Vegas again, <laughs> I needed that <laughs> mic jack. Yes. Oh, awesome. Because personally for me, right now, if I were to do any videos, I would just use my Canon 60D. Yeah, Canon EOS 60D and insert a mic jack into it and problem solve. Yeah, well, what I like also about this this camera is that uh, is I still have the old camera, but I'm able to use that old camera for stuff on the, uh, the race car side of things now. So I'm able to kind of go crazy with that camera with where I put it. Uh, because there's a little bit less risk now that I have my new camera. And on top of that, it's just, I like I said, it's for me, one of the nicest things about this new camera is its ability to film in dark lighting. I didn't have that before, and now I do, and it's just like, oh, yeah. Like, it, you'll see it in the Hawaii videos. There's some scenes where we're in pretty dark environments, uh, like we're going through the lava tubes, in Hawaii, and it's like, oh my gosh, I get to, I was able to see better while I was filming, <laughs> looking at the screen, than I was looking forward. I was like, well, this is strange. You have bionicle eyes. I guess so. So, Dan, questions? Yeah, just a couple more. Uh, about your, you say that you go to conventions and all, so you like to cover conventions. I see you've done, like, little documentaries about conventions and your experience at them. Are you planning to continue this in future conventions, and if so, which convention are you heading to next? Oh yes, yes, yes! I I love I love doing that. It's it's just something that for me when I went to Everfree, I was like, I'm gonna carry around a camera. I'm gonna do this. It's it's kind of of my nature to do it, where I'm just walking around filming or whatever there is to film. And final drop I, jumps out of the bush. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the big reason that I I had to do it that specific convention, the first one I ever went to, was. Well, A, because it was the first one I ever went to, but also because there was the whole road trip up with my girlfriend, and, and there was that whole aspect, and I had never driven up to Seattle myself. I didn't know what to expect. Um, so there was there was a whole excitement behind it, and that, that was fun. And, yeah, it's, it, it became a hit, and I did it at Question LA. People got into it again. So I plan on doing it at every convention I go to. And the, the first convention I have coming up planned is Unicon? No, Equestria LA. Oh, okay. When's awesome. that? That is in May. That's on uh, Mother's Day. Oh. Wow. And uh yeah, I know a lot of people go into Unicon. Uh I do not have I I do not have the I don't know I don't know what to say about Unicon. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know how to say I'm trying to think of my wording here. Interest? No, it's not interest because I I'm actually really jealous about the people going and if because, I and you do go to Vegas quite often so yeah and actually that's the funny thing is uh, I'm actually going to be going there in March um, it's just the means of getting there if if I if I find the means there might be a way it could be a surprise for some people we'll see what happens. Could you hitch a ride like that? Something is there? Are there any bronies in your immediate vicinity that go around? There, there are uh, actually part of the issue is that I actually have a midterm. Uh, <laughs> on oh, Friday. okay. But uh, mm. like I said, um, right now there is no uh, expectation of me being there. Okay, I mean, if people are not expecting you, they'll be surprised. I'm here. <laughs> so, so we'll just have to see. Bronies wreck to A series best goes to yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. That would be. That would be awesome. So I, I've got a question here. And looking through your Facebook page and your YouTube page, I noticed that you have an OC. Yes, I do. 
And yep. the cutie mug is really interesting. Yep, it is a Mickey Mouse head with confetti. Confetti because I'm a party animal. <laughs> and uh, the Mickey Mouse part, I think, throws some people off. They're like, well, why do you have a, a Mickey Mouse head? Um, and, well, A, I'm a huge fan of Disney, but it actually goes beyond that. Um, I, I kind of have the goal of working for Disney someday uh, as an engineer. So, Like at Disneyland? Uh, yes, like at Disneyland. Ah, and, uh, okay. Um, that's kind of like a goal of mine uh, career-wise right now. So, you know, it kind of goes with the whole special talent. Uh, it's kind of what I I am hoping to someday say I do. So that's that's kind of where it's where it is. My my career goal is to work for Disney someday. Also, that's a good goal to work for. So yeah. I'm thinking, who made this OC for you? Because the one I'm looking at Facebook right now, it looks really good. Yeah, that was actually my girlfriend. She uh, she drew that up one day and uh, came up with the colors, came up with everything. Uh, obviously, the hair matches my hair. Um, and, yeah, I, I actually really like it because it's 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 not like an obnoxious, crazy OC. It's just it's it's what I would want in an OC. So she, she does a great job. She actually does a bunch of art on, like, DeviantArt. Um, like I said, her... Her tagline is Toodles3702, and uh, I guess I should say username is that. And so she has stuff on DeviantArt. She has a Tumblr that she occasionally does stuff, and she just started recently doing a new blog on Tumblr called uh, I Can Craft It. It's a Fix It Felix spinoff with Minecraft. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Interesting. Yeah, it is, it is actually interesting because that's another game I haven't played that she's like, you have to play Minecraft. <laughs> Oh no, don't start. Seriously, yeah. don't start Minecraft. Once you get into it, you'll, you'll, you'll never get out of that hole. <laughs> like ponies. Yeah, ponies, ponies are a hole that we went through and never coming back. Yeah, yes, we took a dive. Indeed. A leap of faith into a show that wasn't meant for us. I mean, it basically wasn't meant for any adult, but look, here we are. I see yeah, the guys like, there. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, technically... According to Lauren Faust, it yeah. was intended. So it was it was structured in a way where adults can enjoy the show, but not enjoy to this level. Oh my goodness! Look at where we are now. Yeah, I don't know if anyone really anticipated this. I have to say that I'm surprised with the whole fandom. Like, I like to compare ponies with the popular animes like Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, because they are almost running ten years now and. Uh, we're the only fandom that I can think of that has reached uh, fans over, what, um, millions around the world? It's, it's one of the coolest things I find about this fandom is how prolific it is. With It just produces so much content, music and videos and art and whatever else there is that I can keep, you know, fanfic. I mean, there's just so much stuff that comes out of this fandom and it's amazing. I mean, now we have uh, you know, it might be a, a sore subject at this point to bring up, but I was going to say we had a video game that was being produced. Um, true, it's, true. it's all, it's all this kind of stuff that it, it just kind of goes to show how productive this fandom is. And also kind of more of, you know, you hear people who judge the fandom, like, oh, these are people who have nothing better to do, but look at the stuff that they make. It just kind of goes to show that now these are people who are developing skills right now who are, you know, most of them, you know, in college, going into college or just coming out and they all have something to kind of contribute and that's what's just makes this fandom fun to be a part of true indeed and um like what john delancey said was the star trek fandom is a fandom full of scientists and aspiring scientists the brony fandom is a fandom full of artists and aspiring artists yeah i mean it's it's really cool to see. Literally, I, I just it amazes. Even when I look at animations that are created by people, it's like, oh my gosh! Like it's just so cool to see how developed this fandom is. True. Like, um, for example, the good ones like um, us, the Crusaders. Oh wow! He he did a one to one job with the animation. People would say that is this official. And it's not. 
And also, yeah. Brett Griffin, he can do animation really well, and it's almost so accurate. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, it's just so much, like, you know, you have the the Epic Time series. Oh, yes. Where they, you know, they're, especially with their, their last one, Epic Web Time, <laughs> um, and mm. you have, I, I mean, the list goes on, it's just amazing, it amazes me. Like the Picture Perfect Pony uh, music video that they made with the uh, Mando Pony song. And they have the ponies all over, and it looks like the show made it. It's mind boggling. And even those that are not that close are still really good, like uh, Beep Beep and Mr. Ponyator. His stuff, he, he, Mr. Ponyator works so fast that it's not as show accurate, but it still works. Well, that's the thing, too. It's like some animations out there don't have to be show accurate there it's kind of like art you know there's some people who make a picture that is supposed to mimic the show style or they'll have their own player um their own style and whatnot um and it's just all it, it's just it's cool to see i you know just because it's not show accurate it, it's still good so that's why i like it yeah it's true and it's... that's just and that's just the animation side there's just so much out there yeah, I mean, like, um, you're talking about styles. Uh, we got John Delens. Sorry, um, we got John Joseko. Um, he's not. His art is not show accurate, but it's good. And I say people love his work. And there, there's others that are show accurate, like um, the group on DeviantArt called Pony Vectors. I, I think that they're, they're called Pony Vectors. MLP and, Vector Club. Yeah, the MLP Vector Club, and they do well. V- um, one-to-one ratio vectors of the show and uh-huh. there, there's a lot of creative people in this fandom like um, including you you create one of the how is it it's a different kind of entertainment yet it's the most entertaining stuff around really it's like <laughs> you wow, sit around you. and you look at the screen and it's like so I'm gonna watch a gu- bunch of guys react to a show and you don't you don't really need to even have all those bombastic animations that the original Teens React series because some of those, really, you can see what? They're just a bunch of spoiled teenagers looking at the screen. And yours is like, you, you get a nice variety and spectrum of different bronies from different parts of the fandom and especially different parts of the world. So it's gotten this whole big rainbow of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. And yeah, that's, that's what I, I love to offer is, is that collaboration. Because, I mean, it does take time to put together, but... It, Every time I've done it, it's been worth it, and it's fun. You know, it, if it wasn't fun, there'd be no point in doing it. And as people ask me, they're like, "What should I do in the fandom?" And I'm like, "Do what you enjoy. Do what you know. You have fun doing. If you're not enjoying it, don't do it. It, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be for anything other than you enjoying what you're doing. If you, if I didn't have fun making videos, why would I be making videos? You know, it, it's not because oh. You know, I'm a committed person to, or not committed, but like, I'm contracted to the fandom. I need to make my videos. No. You know, there's there's nothing that is holding me to this except myself. True. And, no, nobody's yeah. pointing a gun at your head saying, do Bora needs to react all that shit. Uh, not right now. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> Soon. The beauty of all this fan-made content that is not motivated by money or by a contract or anything. Like, Norman started the MBS show last year and we're approaching our first anniversary. So, you see, I, I got this question and it's a, it's kind of serious. So, you were saying that you did it out of love for the fandom. And do you have any advice for people who are looking into getting into the fandom but kind of looking at, at it at a point of, I want to be popular? Do you have any advice for them? It's, I think if you go into it uh, with the intention of becoming popular, you're putting your, you're setting yourself up for heartbreak. Uh, when I when I went into this, uh, with, like I said, the first serious video I made was like a Faust, and it it wasn't a video that I said to myself, oh my gosh, I'm gonna you know be famous, I'm gonna be popular, I'm I'm gonna get all this attention. It was something I'm like, you know what? These videos are making me laugh. I want to make a video that makes people laugh too. And it just so happened that it got the attention that it did. Uh, and then, you know, right after that, I made a PMV using um, Party Rock Anthem. 
Uh, and that one also got attention. I was like, oh my gosh. And in my mind, I kind of got this idea like, oh wow, everything I post is going to go big. And so I, I started, you know, I made some more. But those ones didn't take off like the first two did. And it kind of brought me back down there with like, okay, okay. So this is this is how, this is the reality of the situation. And, and really, the reality to all of this is that you, if you go into this for the popularity alone, you're not going to be having fun. It takes time to make a name for yourself. It takes time to get, you know, to to get a following, to keep that following. You have you have to constantly kind of stay on your marker, and uh, it, yeah, like I I would say don't get into it for the popularity. But if you get the popularity good for you you know it's it should be something that you should ultimately enjoy if if it's something that you're in it because you'd like to do it and other people like it then you hit the gold mine um and you know i i I got lucky because the kind of stuff that i do is not necessarily in huge uh droves it's it's not something that's necessarily everyone's doing and I think that's where, you know, I got lucky because really when it comes to fame, one thing I will always agree with is that it's it's a huge part of it is timing and luck. And you can't you can't predict it. You can't it, – it's not something that you could just predict uh, a video is going to go viral or this video is going to have success. You, you have an idea like, oh, this one's going to do well, but you don't know that until it does. Um, I think the perfect example is really Gangnam Style. That is a great example. Uh, I, you know, I, he, for example, Sai making that video made it to, you know, for all of his fans over there and wherever they are. <laughs> I, I don't know what technically that song is, but it's that kind of song. He never intended. Oh, people in California are gonna be dancing this. You know, people all over the world will be dancing this. I, he probably didn't go into it with that intention, but it just happened that way. The the timing, the luck, the exposure, it all has to add up, and it's something that you shouldn't worry yourself with. Uh, like, that shouldn't be your sole reason for getting into it, ever. I, I, I can't stress that enough. If you're only into it for the popularity, you're going to burn yourself out pretty fast. You're going to have a bad time. Yeah, because no matter what, if you're in it for the popularity, you're probably going to continue. No matter where you get, there's always going to be someone who's above you, and it's always going to be a matter of, oh, I'm not there. I'm not, you know, why Why does he get more attention, or why did, why did she get more attention? And if it's just about having fun, you're already winning. You, you release it. Who cares if no one else likes it? It's, it's yours to be proud of. True, true. Like this show. Like this show. <laughs> I have the assumption that nobody listens to it, but <laughs> I, I know there's fun. a few fans. We have tons of fun every week. Yes, indeed. It's all about having fun, though. I mean, like, seriously, that's... If you're having fun, nothing else matters. And it shouldn't matter. True. Like I always say, if you're not having fun, why do it? Yeah, I, I didn't... For example, me. I didn't anticipate that the Bronies React video was going to take off like it did. I had a feeling it was going to be big, but... You know, every video I make, I'm like, oh, this is, this is going to be big. And they're not always big. But that was a video where I, I think I had finally got to the point where, like, I always expect them to be big. I'm not expecting anything. And it exploded. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> True, indeed. Um, sometimes keeping low expectations gives you the best results. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, honestly, it's... It's not keeping low expectations of yourself, but of the response to it. Don't don't over anticipate the response a video is going to get. And sometimes it's just finding the right thing to do. I've seen people do it before, where they did one thing and it took off. And you know, like for example, Solrak has close to thirty thousand subscribers, and he found. That the trick with him was that no one was doing what he was doing. He was just yelling the My Little Pony songs. Now the trick, the the difference between doing something for popularity and doing something because it's popular, I would draw a line there because he did it 
and it also took off, and he's like, well, this is something I'll keep doing, just like I with the Bronies React. I did it. It took off. It was something that people were requesting, and I was like, of course we'll do it again. Yeah. And it's that kind of thing, you know, if you're doing it, if you're doing it because there's a demand for it, there you go. If you do something that there's a demand for, you have a really good chance of at least getting it some attention. Awesome. So um, you you were saying it's like um, do it because um, you love it. You love it, and not do it because it's popular. And what was the phrase again? Um, do it because there's popular. Don't do it. Don't do it to get popular. Oh, no, there's a difference between doing something to get popular and doing something because it's popular. Is it? Yeah, it's that one. Yeah. How did you phrase it? Because it was really good. Oh man, sometimes I <laughs> see. That's the nice thing about when I talk so much, I, I tend to get some stuff right. <laughs> but I, I would say, yeah, it's it's don't do something to get popular, but if it you know if it becomes popular, keep doing it. Okay, okay awesome. that was the word. That was the wordy version of it. I'm sure we'll go back and be like, oh, that's what he said. I'll put that as my I'll put that on my tombstone someday. My <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, um, all all that serious talk. Now, now I'm going to dumb it down to get things entertaining. So, um, we hope you're having fun so far, by the way. Oh yeah. So AC, AC. Um, do you need a haircut? Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did need a haircut. I couldn't see the camera when I was filming. That stuff. <laughs> Uh, it just you were saying that a lot in the Ronin's react. Um, I really, I really need a haircut, and I did. I really needed that haircut, and then I got my haircut. Yeah, and I look. Someone said I looked like Captain America. Oh, awesome. I don't know. That's what studying does to you. You get it, like you don't realize how fast your hair is growing. All the stress. So, uh, do you have any plans on how you're gonna like keep that camera mounted in the car? I do actually. You see, I've tried duct tape. I've tried camera mounts, nothing's going to work. But I figured that if I could just duct tape Saber Spark to my dashboard... It's not going to work. Why? <laughs> because I'll be sliding around all over your dashboard, then it's not going to work. You have to duct tape me down to the dashboard and I put the camera. Yeah. Aren't you like an engineering student? Yeah. Don't you know these mechanics? Oh, my God, man, sometimes. You know what? You know what? Here, check it out. I think we're going to make this work just fine. It's just going to take some toothpaste and bubble gum. <laughs> oh my what goodness. Are you, my mom's purse. <laughs> Engineering, baby. Yeah. Who's that extra person? Could it be. Is that Saber Spark?
So then, yep. Questions? I thought you were. I thought you were gonna take over with a bit more dumb stuff. No, that that was a dumb stuff because he was. Oh, that was it. Uh, that's the only dumb stuff I can think of, man. I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not catered to dumbness. You should know that by now. Okay, then, right. Factory two. One.